All right, as we sit in the hospital again for a severe pain crisis, we'll talk about something that has been proven to help some of people with severe pain crises, and that is called hydroxyurea, or hydrea, or some people call it HU. This is actually the only current medication on the market that's approved specifically to help uh, people living with sickle cell disease. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it, um, who they recommend it for, and how you take it and what are some of the side effects. So hydroxyurea is actually a, um, cancer drug, it's a low-level chemo drug that um, is used to treat tumors. However, they found while they were studying it for cancer that it had this other great benefit in raising something called fetal hemoglobin. So they had some theories that it might actually help single cell disease and after doing some extensive studies they realized that it really in fact does help many people living with sickle cells. So fetal hemoglobin is something that you have inside um, in, in your red blood cells that you have while you're in utero in your mother and um, you lose it and it switches over to what they call hemoglobin A or adult hemoglobin after um, the first couple months of life. And the thing about fetal hemoglobin is um, it is really good at persuading those sickle hemoglobin inside the cell to not um, form those tactoid chains that we talked about that distort the cell. So the higher concentration you have of fetal hemoglobin, the less likely you are to have um, sickle cell problems, sickling problems in the cells. So what they noticed with the hydroxyurea was that um, this great added benefit of a low level of hydroxyurea, nothing compared to what they give the cancer patients, but a low level of hydroxyurea actually does wind up increasing the fetal hemoglobin in many people, which then decreases the amount of sickle cells floating around in your body and ultimately um, decreases the amount of painful crises. So uh, this is not true for everyone. Uh, hydroxyurea does not work for every single sickle cell person. And they're still learning about how and why it increases the fetal hemoglobin and how and why the increase of fetal hemoglobin actually helps um, reduce those painful crises. But uh, it is safe and many people have been using it. Some people have been actually been using it for um, 15 years or longer. So in order to um, use hydroxyurea, many doctors have a specific criteria. and. Um, the first one is if you've ever had acute chest syndrome, which we talked about was that like really fast pneumonia that sick with the sickling in your lungs, that can be fatal. If you've ever had that, if you've had three or more severe pain crises, remember those are those blocked blood vessels that lead you to the hospital, which is where we're at now. If you've had three, at least three that have led towards inpatient um, or to the hospital in any capacity, that would count three in a year. Um, or if you uh, have severe anemia. So one of the great things about uh, hydroxyurea is that it winds up increasing your um, baseline hemoglobin. So if you're at say, you know, a six or a seven, if the hydroxyurea is working, it will increase it up and you could even get up to like a nine or a 10, which is a really nice number to have in sickle cell. So um, the way that they give it is in children it's a liquid and in adults it's a pill and they start off slow. One of the really difficult things for um, all of us patients and parents to remember with hydroxyurea is that it's kind of like an antidepressant in that it takes time to reach um, the full dose in your body. So they want to make sure they have to work you up to a certain, to your maximum uh, level that, that will give you the maximum value without any bad side effects. And that takes time. And then they have to hold you there for a couple of months. So it usually takes between six to nine months with hydroxyurea to know if it's actually working. And so first they check your baseline labs. And on top of having any one of those other qualifiers, you also have to have, um, you can't have very low white blood cell counts because hydroxyurea tends to lower your white count. Remember your white blood cells is that are that army that fight off infection so you don't want to have those really low. They also it also tends to lower your platelet count and your platelet platelets are the ones that clot when you have um, a scrape or any kind of damage to the blood vessels and so you don't want to have really low platelets because then you could um, bleed and not be able to stop bleeding. So they check those um, they check those levels as well as your regular uh, red blood cell levels and then they'll start it and slowly uh, inch you up until you get to the maximum 
value that's working for you. Uh, what this does mean is that as soon as you start taking hydroxyurea and for the rest of the duration of taking it, you will have to come in to do monthly labs at first and then um, some doctors will, once you reach that, that uh, good level, they'll take it back to every two months if you haven't had any side effects. The things that they look for are, you know, low white count, low platelet count, um, a draw, any kind of drop in anemia, and um, if they see any of those things, then they will uh, decrease the dose, wait for your counts to go back up, and then try again. So it's a bit of a juggling act. It does take you know, um, at least half a year, if not that full year, to see if it's working. And it doesn't all work in every single person. So um, they found in studies that it works really well for people with um, SS type sickle cell. And the sickle uh, beta zero and plus thalassemia is in the sickle SC. Um, they, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And so, you know, it's really just working together with your hematologist to see if it's going to help decrease um, some of the complications that the person taking it has and if it's helping them to not have so many complications. The number one target that they're using it for is to decrease those painful crises. Not only are they painful, remember, but they're also damaging the tissue on the other side of that blockage. Um, in the future, I will give a much more detailed conversation about all the different benefits of hydroxyurea that the they are currently researching or that they're hypothesizing about, but this is just the basics of why you would take it, um, some of the benefits that they've noticed, how it works, and how long it takes. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org. Post any comments or questions below and stay tuned tomorrow when I'll give you an overview of what all we do here besides post videos every day in the month of June. Thanks.